Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a linear halogen uplighter, and the reason I'm showing you this lighter light is because it has a dimmer switch in it. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the waveform and power consumption analysis of a fairly standard phase angle control light dimmer. So I've got it connected up to my power analyzer and uh, we're going to run some waveforms. So right now the thing is running and uh, it's using about 230 watts. Okay, so this is uh, an example of the waveforms from the lamp. As you can see it's using about 225, 226 watts. Here's the voltage waveform, reasonable but not too terrible sine wave, the current waveform and the power waveform. Now the first thing you can notice about the power waveform is unlike a con just the normal bulbs that we've seen in other videos, here you can see that there's a step just after the zero voltage point there's a step where the current suddenly rises from zero up to the normal level and at the same way when you, you have it on the uh, negative voltage side there's a zero spot here and then the current suddenly drops down and the waveform is flat bottomed and the way that is is because of the way the dimmer works. So the dimmer doesn't alter the voltage, instead it turns the light on and off very quickly and it s times itself on the zero voltage point and then it waits a programmable period of time before turning the light on. And this is at full power, which is probably around about 95% of the lamp's actual power. Now watch what happens as I turn the light down very slowly and you'll see the waveform change slightly. As you can see, the current waveform is getting trimmed, so there's a bigger and bigger pause as the timer in the dimmer switch waits before it turns on the lamp. There we go. Like that. And eventually we'll get to the point where the light goes out. And now we'll turn the light back up again. So you can see there's a long period of sort of zero power before the spike as the light turns on. There we go. And what's interesting is actually that you can actually see as the filament goes down, so the actual current in the filament goes up. So here we have a peak current of 1, 2, 3, 4 squares, so 1.6 amps when the lamp is at about 50%, but if we turn it up to full power, then the peak current drops down to about 1.3 amps. And that's because of the temperature in the filament altering. So as the filament gets hotter, the resistance increases, and conversely, as we turn the power down, the resistance decreases and higher current flows. So what does this do to the power factor. We've talked about power factor being the amount of energy that is trans transferred for per amp essentially as a ratio of the actual amount of the maximum amount of energy that can be transferred. So here we have a power factor of 1 indicating optimal power transfer um, and that's because the bulb is essentially a resistive load but as we turn the power down watch what happens. The power factor decreases 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0.4 and when we turn it down just to, to sort of tick over oops, I turned it off if I turn it down just so it's ticking over just, just about burning you can see the power factor drops down to about 0 0.2 we're using 0 0.38 amps and we're only getting 20 watts out and you can see that the phase angle has, has been delayed. So we've got a lagging phase angle of 65 degrees and that's because the waveform has been delayed by the timer in the switch. We can display this another way. I've got some graphs so we can see the power factor graph. So one at full brightness as we turn the brightness down you can see the power factor drop down. 
and as we turn it back up again we'll see the power factor rise again and here we have a just another view current at the top power at the bottom so as we turn the lamp down of course the current goes down on average but not the peak current and the power factor changes white is power white is actual power blue is apparent power and this dark blue here is the reactive power the power the the uh, lagging component of the power factor and uh, I'll, this is my favourite display. This is my, the vector scope display, which shows the individual harmonics of the current waveform. So here, this is the first harmonic. This is the sine wave component, the 50 hertz component of the current, currently averaging about um, 1.1 amp, I think. So this is the 1 amp line, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. Uh, well, I can't remember what the scale is. I think that's 200, 400, 600, 800, not 1,000 milliamps. Now watch what happens um, as I turn the power down. This line here is 0 degrees, and as f phase lag comes down this way, and phase lead comes up this way. And as watch what happens as we put the delay on. You can see the current dropping and the phase angle changing. And you'll see the primary fundamental current drop in towards the center at zero. But what are these other other things here, all these colored blobs coming out? And these are the individual harmonics. So this one here, yellow, is the third harmonic. Um, green, I think, is the fifth harmonic. And so on. Um, as we distort the waveform due to the switching so the harmonic content the 150 and the 250 and the 350 hertz components increase because and harmonics by and large don't carry useful energy they simply just take up current they overheat transformers they overheat power lines they're a real nuisance transformers in particular are particularly susceptible to these um, harmonics have a lot more heating capability in transformers um, than normal power. So, um, I hope you found that interesting. We'll just go back to the waveform display and uh, I'll show that one more time. Low power and off. And we'll gradually turn it on. Back up to full power. There we go. Have a nice day.